once again. Okay. <clears throat> I need to get over to Fred Meyer. Pick up uh, some electrical wire nets. Some uh, large ones for uh, Romex type applications. Ones I have are for smaller. And it's not a sunshiny day, as you can see there behind me. It's about 85 degrees, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. warm up. <sighs> oh man. You know, pumpkins in the backyard are turning out very nice. They're getting uh, quite large. Some of the uh, the bigger one anyways. Uh, there's a few of them on one mound that's like pretty good size. Pumpkin leaves are geez, about like 20 inches across almost now. At least 18 inches across. Yeah. Between 12 and 15, I'd say, on the high end, 15. Uh, looks like they got some bud sites starting to flower up on them, but I'm not sure yet. I've never grown a pumpkin before. Uh, been to Roloff's uh, farm a few times with the wife. We go pretty much every year to uh, get our Halloween pumpkin. And jellies and things like that. But by the time we get there, of course, the pumpkins are all harvested and just sitting there waiting to be picked off the ground. <laughs> so uh, it's the first time I've seen uh, a live pumpkin on the vine growing, but I haven't seen a pumpkin itself yet. Just the plant. But the plants are doing good. So uh, we're holding out hope that uh, they'll get pollinated. We've, got, uh, we've been noticing a bunch of honeybees. I've left a bunch of wildflowers growing. Uh, hummingbird variety scattered throughout the yard in that area <coughs> and that's attracting attracting uh, yellow jackets and uh, honeybees so I think I'm gonna go here so we should have uh, a good chance of getting some pollinated pumpkins or pumpkin plant flowers pumpkin flowers there we go which would will produce the pumpkins themselves And then there's, uh, wife's got a variety pack of lettuces. It's coming along very nicely. Kale, arugula, uh, romaine, some other kind of lettuce. Here's a variety of about five. Let's see if this person here. Okay, now I'm going to find a parking spot in here. Park over there. Take forever to get in and out. So my choice. Park somewhere. Oh good. Stop. Good 
got the American flag flying upside down on the Harley. I'll take my usual non authorized, self authorized motorcycle parking zone. Since nobody can park here, it's like wasted space. Too small for cars. It should be designated right from the get-go to be motorcycle parking. At least for you get like two motorcycles in here, at least. But that's where it is. And we go. All right. Straight rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Keep them lovely rolling. Don't they disappear in ride? Oh, I need keys. Magic metal. Gotta have the keys unless you got a fob, electrical keyless, whiz bang 21st century Italian, maybe German. I don't know who has fobs, there are quite a few of them these days. Um, I am gonna take a different route today. decided when I'm rich and famous I'm going to get a uh, new old stock Ninja 1000 because they are ridiculously low priced compared to the MSRP and shit they're like two years old but they're brand new no miles other than what they've been pushed around in the showroom area and the two miles to prove they operate from the factory. And they're like freaking 7999 for uh, I think it's a 2012 or 8499 for a 2013 one with the uh, Pearlescent green. Which is like ridiculously low priced for what you're getting, you know? So that's my motorcycle goal. Don't know when it's going to be. Maybe a year, maybe two. Uh, yeah, I'm going to. Uh, Definitely upgrade to Ninja 1000. I guess I get one of the handful that get left over every couple of years. Unless there's like some huge, major, major, major improvement on the uh, latest iteration of the Ninja 1000 that 
just makes you have to have it if you get the money for it. Quite frankly, I would not be uh, in any way, shape, or form unhappy with uh, any one of the current versions of the Ninja 1000 from 2012 onward. It's like the old saying goes, but best uh, bass guitar in the world is the one you're playing right now. Same with the motorcycle. It's the one that's under your ass and rolling down the road. You can only drive one motorcycle at a time. And like I said, I've had uh, 550, GPZ 550, and Ninja 600R. Uh, and I've driven scads of every size engine freak show bike from the 1970s onward up until getting married. So I know what I'm looking for in a motorcycle. And I really, really like this uh, 300. And if there's any way I can keep it, I'm gonna. <laughs> so I'd still love to turn this into a track day bike. Up in Portland, I get a track day. Portland International Raceway. It's like 350 bucks, plus whatever it takes you to get your bike properly prepped for it. New tires and various other safety things, I'm sure. A lot of people snubbing people, man. Yesterday, she many Christmas. Yes. Absolute. Not motorcyclists. Or riders. They were just... People who normally drive cars that happen to be on a motorcycle. I like to pretend it doesn't bother me, but it kind of does. You know, I can see if you're lost in thought and just don't see the person. Oops. Wrong gear. But if you're, uh, just to let you know, that was like a, I'll tell you what gear that was. That was sixth gear. I started out in sixth gear there. All you gotta do is rev it up to about 4,000 RPM. <laughs> wanted to see if I could do it anyways so yeah you can start off a Ninja 300 from a light in six gear without stalling not the greatest thing for the clutch but it's only a few seconds anyways so I got to thinking uh, as far as upgrading one of these days like you know like I said in a year or two is uh I had that scooter that I drove for almost two years in town and I put over 50% uh, into it what its total cost was in upgrades just to get it to where I wasn't slowing traffic down here in town up to 40 miles an hour, 45 if I was doing good. and. Uh, I don't really look at the Ninja 300 in that light totally, but there's a lot of money to be spent to get it to where I would want it to be. I don't want to just do preload adjusters and clip-ons and rear sets and stuff. If I do it, it's going to be Olin's rear shock, KYB front end, or Olin's, whichever one's available. They're about 1200 bucks. Exhaust system, Power Commander 5, Auto Tuner for it, all that stuff. But it ends up to get this bike where I would want it to be, I would have to spend about an extra pretty well 5,000 bucks. And then I would still have a very fast and pretty lightweight Ninja 300. That's what it would still be. And I don't always necessarily like flogging the engine to get up to where I want to go. 
just out of politeness to people around me, it'd be nice to be able to do the same thing at 5,000 RPM as opposed to 8 or 9 or 10,000 RPMs. Don't quite uh, look comfortable over a long term ride, man. That's another thing about the uh, like about the Ninja 1000 as opposed, of course, to the ZX10 is the more upright seating position. Kind of looks more like it's uh, pretty close to the same geometry here as the 300. So, in fact, it may even be. Uh, I'm not sure. Got a little bit longer tank, so may have a little bit longer reach. It's hard to say. But yeah, gee, you know, 8,000 or 8,500, depending on what color you want. What you know, there's one that's uh, I think it's all it's the reverse green and black, but it doesn't have the fluorescent uh, stuff on it. And it looks very nice, <laughs> believe me. But then they have the next year, which had the uh, the pearlescent green and black were reversed. As I as I said, to the uh, pearlescent was added to the green. So it's like a really really nice looking bike. <coughs> and that one's like freaking eighty five hundred bucks. No setup fees. All that type of stuff, so aside from taxes and DMV fees and registration and all that junk. Probably looking at about uh, 9000 You'd have uh, one hell of a bike. Quite a bit heavier than this one though, that's one thing I'm not totally fond of. I know I'd probably miss it, but uh, bikes is as bikes does. cruiser in front of me. Like I said, 
it's a nice area. It's not always about going past. I don't like pushing up on people when I'm driving in traffic just because I want to go fast. So any of you law enforcement officers out there that may want to pull the dube over, just remember that. I don't uh, tailgate people out of anger unless they're like, uh, have proven to want to kill me for some reason. <laughs> No, I don't. Uh, I don't do the road rage thing on people like that. I get a little feisty, but I'm not going to be flipping people off, and kicking their cars. I'm not saying I'm a perfect person. I'm just saying I try to be a little mellow. But when the road's open. becomes a little more fair game. Yeah, we're in fifth gear doing uh, 25 miles an hour, six gear, excuse me, 27 or 25. It's the uh, speedometer factored in. So might as well kick back and relax. Get a few car lengths on the person ahead of us. I know I'm not all agitated. I know some people think us motorcyclists on a sport bike are just all about the speed. But I'm enjoying, uh, I've always liked driving motorcycles. driving him slow. I hope this guy doesn't take a right though. Please no. Please no. Please no. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Now, a whole different story here. Oh, well. Oh, boy. So we'll see. I guess I don't like speeding through neighborhood neighborhoods. There's a little section of road here that was pretty fun. So I don't get stuck behind a bunch of a lot of gaggers. Select dud troglodytes. Mmm, yes. Yeah, still liking the uh, little notch extra on the preload on the bike. Definitely helps on handling. Need a little more on the front end though, man. It's uh, pretty loose for her. Aggressive riding on bumpy, bumpy roads. There we go. It's the one actual in town corner that there is. The rest are all outskirts and old farm roads and country roads that uh, they maintain paved between here and neighboring town across the river. Oh yeah. Seriously, I want uh, Kawasaki. I want to uh, throttle by wireless throttle by brain. I want that uh, in my lifetime. In fact, I want all throttle, clutch, and brakes to be brain controlled in my lifetime. So all you got to worry about with your hands is steering, and all you got to worry about with your feet is bike positioning. Wouldn't that be awesome? That's some pretty good concentration, though. Or at least have it to where it uh, is designed in a way to, that the brain adapts and makes it second nature. The biofeedback, haptic response or something, who knows. <laughs> haptic, by the time that ever becomes real with the uh, thought control, 
wireless uh, thought control for the motorcycle. They'll be laughing at what haptics is and all our preconceived notions from the day, this day. stretches at the both carpal tunnel and radial tunnel so even a bike uh, semi upright as this one uh, occasionally gives me a little bit of problems if I've been doing other stuff that stresses them out found some good stretches uh, on the YouTubes for people uh, just like me few of those and all the numbness and tingling goes away from the elbow forward and all the fingers that are and thumb that is affected by tunnel and radial or carpal rather tunnel and carpal radial carpal tunnel and radial tunnel Okay, in the meantime though, the throttle hand phases in and out of its own consciousness. set the camera back up, not the GoPro, but the uh, C100 Mark II, set it back up, get some more footage of the uh, bees drinking, it's pretty cool, they were uh, just land, some would land on the water and just float on the water, you know, without breaking surface tension, and just chugging down some water and then they'd fly off, and <laughs> some of them land on the little rock island and
I guess I should show. I always forget <laughs> at the end. I always forget at the end to uh, show the fruits of my labor, such as it is. Just a little bag of multicolored, uh, you know, different sizes. And the uh, wire nuts, heavy duty on down to small. So, that's that. <laughs> no big deal. Alright, later.